There are worship leaders who are gifted and create rich Sunday morning experiences, but their personal lives don't reflect core Christian beliefs. Okay or not okay? Why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's a that's a great question. Um, you know, this is something. So, the church is something I'm very passionate about. Uh, in all of her beautiful brokenness, yeah, in the messy, just broken place that she's in, I'm still very. Um, I'm called to the church. I'm passionate about the church, and by that I mean the body of believers, the community, spiritual community that we know as the church. And um, I have been walking with Jesus. I just realized for like over fifty years. Whoa, guys, I'm old. And I've been in a lot of church environments. I've been in worship ministry to some extent since I was 18, Hmm. Um, in very fundamentalist environments, in charismatic environments, and everything in between, in um, borderline cessationist environments, and all of the things. Hmm. Can you define cessation? I mean, not for any of us, but just in case there's a listener named Chad that doesn't know what cessation means. Hey, Chad. Hey, Chad. <laughs> Listener so, Chad, this one's for you. Thanks for calling for you. in. No, that's a good question. Cessationists just be- don't believe that the the spiritual gifts um, that are um, in uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and a couple other places that they're for today. So that the, those spirit supernatural gifts, maybe as you want to call them, that they died with the after the first oh, okay. um like Sometimes. prophecy and tongues. Prophecy, and... tongues, miracles, gift of healing, you know, words of knowledge, prophetic gifts, um, all those things that, that, that they've ended. And so I've been in all those environments and I've led in a lot of different environments. Mm-hmm. I've been in environments where um, there have been paid musicians. I've been in environments where there's volunteer musicians. I've been in environments where um, worship pastors have um, fallen. I've been in environments um where non-Christians have been hired, you know, they've, they have a, they hire people and there's been a value that it's okay because they're going to be exposed to the gospel. Yeah. So I, I think you can make an argument for anything. I think one of the things for me as a leader, um, I want, we want to represent Jesus. Well, right. You're on a stage, you're on a platform. Um, that said, um, I'm more concerned. I'm concerned about people's heart, right? So you can have someone who does say all the right things, but their life is just trash. Um, I'd rather have somebody who's honest and says, I don't know where I'm at, but I'm willing to be here. Mm. Like, yes and amen all day long. Um, I've had, I have friends. Who, me. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> yeah. Um, because it's real. Yeah. Right. And, and, and Jesus wouldn't turn that person away, in yeah. my opinion. Um, I, I, ha- I have friends who's, um, well, our f- dear friend of ours, Colin Ferris, you know, his mom was a flute player and did not know Jesus and was practicing flute in her living room. And the pastor of the church across the street heard her playing and walked over and said, hi, you know, we could really use a flute player. And she's like, well, I don't know that I believe any of this stuff. He's like, that's okay. We'd love to have you. Mm-hmm. And she came and started playing flute and she came to know the Lord and brought her family. Right. You know, so yeah. I think there's, I think we can get very, um, pharisaical about, Oh, the platform, need, you know, all that stuff. And I do think that there's a, a, a responsibility if I dare say I'm going to lead somebody else at the same time. Um, I'd rather have somebody who is sincerely willing to be present and honest about that. Yeah. And, um, Rather than someone who is saying some one thing with their mouth and then basically flipping off the the integrity of the ministry by going and living differently, mm. does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Now here's another thing, though, mm. and this is, you know, this we're gonna have to stand before Jesus one day and go, mm, really? One thing that I struggle with is, you know, we all struggle with leadership. Um, You know, we've seen a lot of collateral damage of faulty leadership in the last 30 plus years. And we can go into it. That could be a whole nother podcast, Mm -hmm. how that happened. And I got I got my thoughts, right? (laughs) Well, Um, we'll see how this one goes and then maybe we'll have you back. (laughs) Um, But, you know, through the years, I've I've had dear friends who have been hurt horribly. I've had friends who've 
I had a friend who married a pastor and, you know, on their honeymoon, Pandora's box opened up of this guy's life, you know, and all these things. And, and this was someone who was beloved in the church and ever, just had a following and everybody thought he was great. And people came to Jesus through this man. Like there was <clears throat> ministry that took place and you're just going, Lord, I don't get that. That's not okay. You know, you start wrestling with that. And there's a verse in Philippians that is so infuriating. <laughs> 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 but Paul, he's talking about his chains. You know, he's in jail and he's talking about how um, the gospel is being furthered through his imprisonment. And then he says, there's those that are preaching my chains and they're doing it out of selfish ambition and those who are doing it with good motives. And then he says, what do I care as long as the gospel is being preached? Mm -hmm. What? Like, what do you mean? What do I care? You know, they're doing it with ill motive. They're doing it for selfish ambition. But he's saying, well, but if the gospel's going out and somebody receives um, the reality that they're seen, known, and loved by God, that they see who Jesus is, then I'm okay with the flawed yeah. vessel. Now, we don't want to take that into our churches and go, yeah, whatever, come on, whatever you want to do. But, <laughs> yeah, here's but, the formula. Right. But there's, and, and we've built these platforms. Hmm. Like, where's a platform in the New Testament? Like, I mean, here we're going to get on a whole nother, you know, sure. um, spiritual community. What we do in church isn't even biblical. I wouldn't say it's heretical, but the gathering of hundreds, if not thousands of people on a Sunday morning, there's a stage. We do these songs. There's lights, now we're there's doing the church. Band. Now we're now doing church, church is happening. Now church is happening. And then the all important guy with the all important message that talks for 45 minutes. And then the, you know. Like none of that is a little chest is, hair exposed, maybe. I don't even TV. have any. We don't even have any fish and loaves in there. <laughs> right. Jeez. So none of that is is really. That's all cultural, and so we've created stages. Nobody's supposed to yeah. be on a stage. I just don't like the forty five minutes. That's well, too long. Well, even so, but when Paul says <laughs> Paul, when Paul's talking to the church and he's. He's writing his epistles and he's he's instructing because it's all messy because it's people and all the mm -hmm. crazies happening. He's like, you shut up, you do this, you know, yeah. like all that stuff. And he's saying, um, even even in the the books about the gifts, right? Yeah. So I'm, I know this is rabbit trailing off the original yeah. question, but um, there's the list of the gifts, the gifts of prophetic gifts, word of knowledge, all those things. And then he goes into the love chapter, which, by the way, in context, is not about a wedding. It's about the gifts. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love doesn't keep a record of wrongs, right? You know, if I'm a if I'm just parading my gifts and I don't have love, get out, right? Then Paul, when he talks about order in the church, he's talking about what the gathering should look like. And he says, one will have a word, one will have a song, one will have a scripture. You know what I mean? That's the that's how the spiritual community is supposed to interact not have a stage. So I think having this stage imposes this expectation of like a priesthood, like like the Old Testament temple, how they should, yeah. um, you know, there's this holy expectation of whoever's teaching, whoever's speaking, whoever's singing, when the invitation for spiritual community is that we're growing and we're being transformed as a community. Yeah. And that is all of us collectively coming in and sharing and and being iron that sharpens iron. So, um, so going back to that, I I think that we've created stages that that can lead to um, hard and scary things, and that's happened both for the pulpit and for the worship platform. It's like it amplifies the. Uh Oh, I go to church and I, I get something out of church because they are doing this thing yes. up there. And, and I, I sense you breathing, Jeff. What were you going to say? <laughs> I want to make sure. Last episode was like, turned out to be all about me. And so oh, I don't feel self-conscious. Don't feel like... self-conscious. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I, I do. I do like the idea that, yes, there is somebody who is on stage and, and, but it creates a group of people coming together. So if you just saw little dots from way up above you would see like a few people moving into this building and then cars pulling up and then you know little dots little people walking into an area this is what the government sees when yeah. it's watching <laughs> all the religious but it, ult ultimately <laughs> it's it's kind of like going back to like when kids go to high high school and it's like oh there's the sports people and there's the you know the drama people and but ultimately 
church creates a place where people feel like they belong. Like, yeah. These are my people. Yeah. And so everything is open, uh, hopefully, in that environment where you can just stop somebody who's not a friend, somebody you don't even know, but you're like, I, I trust that I could stop someone that came to church today and just say, hello, how's it going? Mm-hmm. Who are you? And and strike up a conversation Um Whereas that you, a lot of people might not feel comfortable with that, and so I think, yes, there are some, there are some terrible things that happen within churches, uh, within the church, on the stage, in leadership. It, it can go sideways, but it is a place where people can, can connect, and and so, no matter what, there there's always some silver lining in within it within a church, even if the person who's preaching from the pulpit is is like totally off the rails, but someone came in, it's like, I'm accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior today, and they just go, they go. <clears throat> well, and, uh, you know, so that's redemption, right? That 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 God takes the mat, like, even in, in, spite, in, of, in, in, in spite of ourselves. Of, in spite yeah. of ourselves, it's something... Something good can come from even the ugliest and stupidest of situations. Yes. That doesn't mean we want to create an environment that's um, just, oh, I don't care what you do or how you do it or that there's no accountability. I mean, the, the goal is that we come into a community and we want to grow to grow as people. We want to be accountable to one another. We want to mutually submit to one another. So that would imply that I'm I want my life to move mm-hmm. in a direction, right? And and so that would be the goal. Um that doesn't always happen. Um sometimes stuff happens. Um if we love people well, then they'll want to come in and submit them be submitted to one another in that. Um but at the end of the day, uh can God use people that aren't wholly submitted to him? Of course. You know, can can yeah. he move? Can can they minister to people? Yeah, actually. Yeah, and I think I used to care about it. Well, I was about to say I used to care about it a lot more when I was younger, um, and feel like if you're not checking all these boxes, well, then you didn't earn the right to be on stage. Yeah. Um, and I'm not worried about that as much anymore. Uh, but I do agree with you too that it feels better if if at least that person is is honest, even off stage. If they're like, yeah, hey, this is this is where I'm at, and and again, for some reason in my head, I, I will kind of make a distinction if you are like the main leader versus yeah, yeah. like a uh, someone who's playing in the band. Um, I don't think it's I don't think it's all the same. I wouldn't I, I could I think I give more leeway to someone who's like, hey, you don't yeah. have a mic. Well, absolutely. And 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 hear me what I'm saying. I'm I'm not saying, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah, I'm no. saying. God is not going to stop moving and meeting his people and his kids yeah. that are genuinely seeking him because yeah. somebody on stage is being an idiot. Yeah. Right. Um and I do think that we all are going to we are all accountable to him, right? Sure. So if we have a holy God <laughs> that is calling us. So but we're what what we're talking about is like that blatant um disregard and rebellion yeah. to who Jesus is calling the the oh. life we're supposed to live, right? 